Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Christopher Brown. I'm your host, Christopher Brown, and I am pleased and honored to have on our guests. That right, that's right, two guests, one show. It's a great moment in history when we have more than one person on the show at the same time, and I couldn't be happier to have them. I've been uh, listening to their stuff nonstop over the last week, so I'm assuming if you have algorithms that show a massive increase of listenership out here in Calgary, Alberta, that is me just to put that out there and they are the uh producers writers actors of doorway to nightmare and that is winslow swan and crimson mckenzie swan crimson thank you so much for doing this is an honor and a pleasure absolutely absolutely it's an honor for us to be on the show well, I, I'm hoping we can get you some more Canadian fans after this episode because we have listeners from coast to coast to coast here. So I will be pumping that out as much as possible. But before we start, um, I, I, let's, let's do the roundtable introductions. We'll start with Crimson here. Crimson, who are you and what brings you to Doorway to Nightmare? I am Crimson McKenzie and... My bestie, Swan, brings me to Doorway to Nightmare. <laughs> uh, we came up with this and it's it's been going and it's great. And I wouldn't be here without him, so. So what's your role with the show? Um, we go over the scripts together. I edit and then we're both the actors and quite a bit of them. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot. <laughs> a lot of them, yeah. Swan, what about yourself? You uh, before the in the pre-interview, you said you are the writer, the the writer with bad, bad grammar. But how do you come yeah. to Doorway to Nightmare? Well, um, actually, it's a it's a dream I had for about well, years. <laughs> um, I I started in radio when I was sixteen. Wow. as a disc jockey and an announcer uh and for years i grew up listening to the old radio shows from like inner sanctum and i grew up on radio mystery theater and one night i came over here we were just hanging out we'd known each other for quite, quite, some, time. quite some time and i got to talk and don't get me started on the old time radio because i could go on all night but which i think i did that night quite a bit I had the idea and the opening already in my mind. I told her, and you said, write it and we'll do it. Wow. And that night has led to all of this. <laughs> so how yeah. did how did you guys meet? Because uh, you're, you're, I'm assuming you guys are friends and you guys have been friends for some time. So how does uh, uh, two people come together to create this kind of masterpiece? Because uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of blow smoke up your butts here, but I, I'm so enjoying them. It takes me back to like you. I came from the radio days, the, ra the radio theater. And I'm like, this is what I grew up on. So how does a friendship like this even start to begin with? We met and I found out he was a writer and I'm a writer. So that became a lifelong friendship to date. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm also dyslexic. So it takes me a little while to read. And he was like, well, I have audio books. I was like, what? And so he downloads his audio books and he, I listen to them. And then I see him the next day and he's like, so what did you think? I was like, I fucking hated it. And he was like, he got this. Mm. Okay. And I was like, no, no, I don't mean I hated it like that. I mean, <laughs> the ending, I wanted so more. I wanted so much more. I was like, no, you can't just leave me hanging like that. <laughs> and from then on, we were best friends. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> she, um, she's been great. Uh, not not just as a friend, but as a co-producer of the show. Um, one of the best editors, when, when I was still writing and I still have a novel sitting on my desktop. Actually, I have, we, we have two, we co-wrote one together. Yes. We haven't had time to go over editing because we've been so involved with- The Doorway to Nightmare. The Doorway to Nightmare. And when I, I, 
I brought the first grit for her, which is called Harvest. And it was a few days later, we recorded it. No, we did it that no. day. Did we do it that we day? Did yeah, it we that did it that day. day, yeah. And I put it all together. I edited it and you were just <laughs> amazed. I was, I really was. It was great. So. And then you come back and you're like, hey, well, I have another one. I was like, <laughs> How do you do that? In one <laughs> night, he has four other four other scripts to go over. And I was like, what? I thought we were doing one. Yeah. Just, just one. I, I think both of us are a little surprised that it has gone as far. I mean, I honestly thought maybe six good shows and, you know, we'll move on to something else. Well, here we are tonight, premiered the 50th show of yeah. Doorway to Nightmare. And... On that note, we're spinning off another series called The Casebook of Sidney Chase, which we had already done two episodes, two two-part episodes within the Doorway to Nightmare series, but we love the characters so much that... Yes, we want to play off of them, and yeah. it's fun. It's absolutely fun and great, and we love it. So for those who don't know, and for those who haven't listened to an episode, um, what is Doorway to Nightmare? Because we've talked about how it started, but um, for anyone, spoiler alert, if you know uh, a former guest of ours, David Mercer, who's been on the show numerous times, horror author, uh, he introduced us, and this Doorway to Nightmare yeah. is, spoiler alert, Nightmare's in the name, a horror radio show as well. So how did the idea of a horror radio show come about? Are, I have we, to give this one to you. Uh, well, well, as I said, as I said, I grew up listening and collecting old radio shows uh, on everything I could find, cassette, eight track, vinyl records, whatever. And uh, listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater, which started in the 70s, a uh, huge fan. I have all the shows now, but... Um, I wanted to do something similar because I always gravitated to horror. And, but I think that Doorway to Nightmare isn't just a in your face <laughs> horror. Every episode is horror. We like to play around with different genres mystery, thriller, thriller, uh, sci fi. Yes. Even we, we've done a couple of sci fi and, episodes. And you do delve into the horror part I, well, yeah. quite well. Uh, the one episode that comes to mind, she asked me to write a jump scare kind of episode. Well, you know, in movies, that's easy to do. You know, if I, the camera's coming up to somebody and all of a sudden they do, boom, you know, something like that. You know, you're like, for anyone who's listening on radio, for yeah. anyone who's listening to this via the audio show and not our YouTube channel, they're going, what did he just do? Did he do something yeah. funny? Did he do something scary? Which I can it's, imagine is quite Wait a minute, hard. let me show you this. It's like one of those grotesque faces that jump out at you on the screen. <laughs> That's what he was trying to portray into the yeah. story. So so I have now I have to do it audio-wise. And if you haven't heard the show, there is a little bit of a surprise in that first act that actually made her jump. Yes. And I thought, Okay, I've succeeded. <laughs> you know? I, you know, I don't do horror well. <laughs> um, oh, really? It's nice. yeah, it's extremely funny because my best <laughs> friend is a horror writer. Uh, when I met him, he had how many books did you have out at, at the time? Fourteen. Yeah, I bought them all, yeah. and I, I yeah. don't do horror, but I bought them all because it was a different. I don't know, just a different type, a different spin on everything. And I actually enjoyed it. I just don't watch horror movies because of that jump out, ugly face, scary thing. And you don't know when it's going to happen. And you don't know what's going on. And, and I just, I panic. So I don't like the movies. He loves the movies. <laughs> so. And it's usually always a cat at first. There's usually always a cat that scares you. <laughs> and then there's the cat afterwards. I'm not saying anything for anyone who's listened to the show, but. <laughs> oh my God. Well, you are absolutely correct on that one, aren't you? <laughs> um, and 
and Go ahead. something Go. else about Princeton too. Um, she she was a stage actress. Oh yeah. As well, she was in a production of Steel Magnolia. Steel Magnolia. Yeah. Right? yeah. And um, when I pitched her the idea for the show, and I really wasn't pitching the idea, I never expected her to go go write a script. Go write it, and we'll do it. Forty years, I've been talking to other people about this. She was the only one that said, "Go write a script." So I did. And um, but she is so amazing as a voice actress, I've told her this before, that no matter what the play is, it's a different character. It's her voice, but it's a different character every single time. It's a different and, take on things. And yeah. I do, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to ask you this, Crimson, because you, you kind of lit the spark that is Doorway to Nightmare now, because you told Swan, go do it. If you want to do it, go do it. So yes. what was it about that pitch that he gave you that you ultimately <laughs> said, you know what, go do it. If you want to do it, I'll support you. I'll back you, but just go do it. What was it about that pitch? Because everyone has come, like I've seen Shark Tank. I've seen Dragon's Den. I've seen pitches after pitches. And sometimes you go, oh, okay, don't do it. Just get away from me. But you, you saw something in that, in him that made you think, let's do it. <laughs> Absolutely. I have read his writings and it was a dream of his. And why not? Why not? If you want to do something so badly in your life, then you do it. You take it and you run with it. And knowing how good he, of a writer he is and how wonderful and creative and clever he is, <laughs> it's okay. I'm bragging on I, you. I know. It's okay. <laughs> But he's my best friend, and I would want any of his dreams to come true, just like anyone. If you want something so badly, do it. So let's talk about that very first episode, Harvest. Um, this is going back almost a year ago. Must when, we? Pardon me? <laughs> I said, must we? It has been a, a long yes, a while. <laughs> we, I always love going chronological order, Swan. So we're going all the, let's go back to the before times, as they used to say. Um, Writing books and writing scripts for a radio production are two different beasts in itself. Um, and I, I have, I've, I, I, I start a book and then I try to write a book and it just doesn't go anywhere. But I can put pen to paper, and a conversation is much different than writing a book. Take me through that process of sitting down and actually putting pen to paper and saying, okay. X, Y, Z, this person said this, this person said this, because there's a different style of writing that you have to try to undertake when writing for radio. So what was that process like oh, yeah. for you? Well, well, for me, it's it, it's actually quite easy. Oh, um, of course. <laughs> I, I mean, it's it's most well, I mean, it's mostly it, it's it's just dialogue. So I'll hear the characters and I always made a joke. Why, why do you write? Why are you a writer? I say to get the voices out of my head. Yeah. So, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll come up with like a scene and, and I've been doing this for a while. Um, I'll actually act out the scene on my own, playing all the characters and everything, sort of getting the story together. But I write differently than most people. I start at the end. He's so strange. <laughs> He literally does. He's he has an ending already. He's okay. like, I just have to make up, I just right. have to get to the he already has it in his mind what he wants to do, what he knows, how it's gonna happen, and he just fills in the planks. Yeah. Like I said, he's amazing. Yeah. And <laughs> the, I mean the most difficult part is the the actual writing of the script is putting in all those okay, uh sound effect, door opens up, footsteps night ambient sound or something like that you know because all that has to be in the script for the production and um mainly because i'll forget <laughs> when when i'm editing um yeah you show up at my door with five I, I five know. all right in one night five here i did this let's go over them like five <laughs> i barely have enough time we do to have fun one. editing <laughs> so how does and, that how does that work because you swan and and then i'm gonna pivot to uh, crimson here but 
when I write something, when I do something myself and I put something together, it's always hard to have someone judge it, right? It's always hard to give over that rough draft and have someone judge it. Is it easy to go up to Crimson and say, okay, tear this apart. I need to know what you actually think because we want to put out the best product. And then Crimson, is it easy for someone like yourself who's editing these to go back to Swan and say, this was great, but it was, we need some serious rewrites here. Talk it me through actually, that. Go ahead. It actually is very easy. He takes oh. criticism extremely well and I get it. I don't, I don't do it in a negative way though. I'm like, oh, this is brilliant. I just, could we maybe try it like this or, or take that line out? It's not making sense. Let's, let's do what you originally thought. And he's just like, okay. Or, or he will disagree and say, no, I need this to be in there. And I'm like, okay, well, let's find a way around it. And yeah. then it's done. <laughs> we just edited a script for season five the other night. And first act she loved. Yeah. It was great. But apparently I kind of went off the rails on it in act two in act two just just a little bit you know grims is like just a little bit it's it just it was a little weird <laughs> just a tad you know and, and uh i said i'm not married to it here delete 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 yes, <laughs> you know he did and he takes it on the chin because he knows that i don't mean him harm i'm trying to enhance it and make it better i can i i don't mind um like constructive criticism. Like one of my earlier books was a book called Do Not Read This Book. I, it was kind of a joke, okay? And it's not really a novel. It's more like three short stories yeah. with a wraparound story. Yeah. Well, somebody reviewed it and I don't remember exactly where, um, but they said that, uh, uh, did anyone else notice the inordinate amount of misspellings and that kind of thing. Well, I kind of purposefully wrote it that way because the character is supposed to be writing this like in a diary kind of thing and not to disparage anyone from this area, but. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, no one went to Mark Twain and went. Yeah. No, they're doing that now. They're I know. doing that now. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, but as long as, it, it, you know, if you just say, Something like, uh, you know, oh, that was just horrible. Yeah, like what would make you do that? Yeah. yeah. Or, Ew, like, so you want you want crazy. some constructiveness back towards why we want to change this. Now, yes, if, if it go, makes you better, yes. Yeah. Now, you better. Let's flip that around a little bit here, because Swan just said that he writes a story with the people in his minds and. He, he writes it like that as a dialogue. When acting in a situation like that, when you're reading the script, it it is now taking what was in Swan's head and now putting it into Crimson's voice, which is always a bit of a tricky situation. And I guarantee you, I know where this is going. And Crimson, you're going to say, no, it's easy. It's perfect. Everyone gets along. Is it always, is it easier because you guys are so good friends that you're able to take constructive criticism from Swan when he says, that's not how I potentially wanted to yes. see it. And let me tell you, he does say that. He'll go, can I stop you there? And I'm like, well, of course you can. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, how about trying it more like this? And I listen, I say, okay, let's go, let's do it. <laughs> and, and the thing, and well, and the thing about the show, um, and it amazes me, I think it amazes her too, we have so many people involved as actors and actresses, but they are all over the country. Uh, we got three in Colorado, one in California, one in Kansas. We had one in New uh, Jersey. Yeah, we did have one in New Jersey, but life kind of caught up to him, so he, was, he wasn't able to do anymore. Um, and we just send them the script with whatever part they're playing. They record their lines and then send them back. Wow. Which is extremely difficult for an actor mm -hmm. anyway, because part of acting is listening. Listening, yeah. 
you don't hear the reaction, you're not going to really know what your reaction is supposed to be. So I have been actually amazed at the way, I mean, we have a couple of actors that will do a line maybe three or four times with different inflections. And then they say, okay, you pick the best one. Yeah, that takes forever. <laughs> But, yeah, yeah. We, we have one actor who he had five lines and the sound power was 11 minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I understand that though. They're, they're trying to do their best that, yeah. to put out there. Yeah. And, and basically, that's all we want. We, you know, we want to put out the best show that we can, um, not only story wise, but technical wise as well. Occasionally, we've had to have people re record a lot because it just didn't quite fit in with the story. Mostly technical issues. Yeah, it's like mostly. Like plumbing in the background or something. Most everyone does fantastic, and I'm so proud of our cast. Oh, so what's we, the, we've got some really great people. What's the time frame for an episode? Because the, the length of the episode is roughly about 20 to about 30 minutes long, depending on which ones you're talking about. Because like I said, I've been going back through the back catalog. How, because from moment of conception in Swan's head to releasing it a Friday night, what is that time frame? Because uh, you said earlier on, you've come to Crimson and said, here's five, here's five scripts. So let's do all five together all at the same time. If he brings it over on a Monday and it's just him and I, Tuesday evening, he'll have it done. Like well, re more like Wednesday morning. Well, Wednesday morning. Yeah. <laughs> because we stay, we're late people. We stay yeah. late. So, uh, like, by done, do you mean script done? Or do you mean recorded, no. put no. to bed Recording done? No. Everything. If it's just him and I in it. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, it, if, it's, if it's just if it's, us two doing it, fairly easy. It's multiple characters. You know, we have, we to, have wait to wait on so, the sound files to get in. But... Editing, a, like one show editing, takes me approximately six hours to do. He puts it all together, the sound yeah. files. And he's amazing. I'm telling you, he he just blows my mind I, how he can do all this in no time. I am flabbergasted right now, Jay, because <laughs> I've listened to it. And I'm like, this is probably taking them like a month to put together each episode, probably like oh, no. a few weeks of recording. And you're telling me that it takes you like three days. I am now yeah, like, did. I feel yeah. like inadequate when talking to you. Okay, Swan, geez. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, you got to remember, I have a background in radio, so I did a lot of You editing. too! <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, that was back during the days when you had scissors and a piece of tape and, you know, and now it's just cut and paste. Yeah. Know, on the computer, so it makes it a lot easier. I mean, I get behind sometimes and he'll come over and we'll record the next five plays for me. Like, we'll stay up a couple hours and record the plays and then he's got it. So I usually do five in one night, four. Yeah, four or five. Around I, mean, there. I remember one night we did three. And I oh. went back, it was like a couple of days later, I'm listening to him and I went, this does not sound right. Oh. I panicked because I had to tell her, we're going to have to redo Dude, those three. All of that again. Because Dummy here forgot to change the mic input on the computer. So it was recording <laughs> off the computer and not the microphone. Oh. I was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> but we still did it. We did it. It um, was fine again uh, we're going to go a little bit back here we're going to go back to that very first episode of harvest um i'm always very cautious to put stuff out that i've done interviews they're my babies right they're things that like i i, I love them I, I i think they're perfect but i i will always hate the criticism that people are going to send my way after doing this for over 400 episodes I've gotten to the point where I'm going, okay, I'll file your criticism in the correct filing folder, which is the garbage. Going back to that very first episode, how hard was it to release the episode? Because this is your passion. This is what you wanted to do. This is something that you've been wanting to do for some time. And then here we go. We have to hit the publish button and we have to see where yep. it goes. Can I take this real quick? Sure. Okay. She not only edits the scripts, 
after I put everything together, I'll come over here and let her listen because sometimes I need an extra set of ears to hear uh, maybe there's a technical issue or um, there should have been a longer pause or something like that. You know, so, so she does that as well. Um, I think the very first episode, though, you just loved right off the bat. I didn't. I didn't know it was going to go from that to here. So. Yeah, I mean, neither one of us knew that it would go as long as it has. No. I mean, we're grateful. Yeah. I mean, but putting it out there as far as difficulty, it was just like, well, we're going to try. Yeah. And it was mainly just for us anyway. So, and then from that, it just went to. It, it, we, we need to step this up. Yeah. <laughs> and well, we, and yeah. if you listen, if you're listening to the shows in order, and you're kind of a technical person, I know you you are. Um, you can almost hear the gradual progression. We uh, can at least. We yeah, <laughs> we can. We we've gone back to uh, listen to shows and go. Uh, uh, wish I'd done that. Like, yeah, yeah, like, wish we would have, <laughs> yeah, but you can't go back and you can't bitch about it because it's already done. But are you surprised at the reception? Because Swan, yourself, like me, uh, we're radio guys. We, we grew up with this stuff. I'm not, I'm not saying that we're the exact same age. I think probably about, I, I'm 40 and I'm assuming you're not 40, but I could be wrong. Um, are you surprised that people have gravitated towards a, audio show on YouTube that people seem to be going to because I'm looking at some of your numbers for some of your episodes and they are freaking fantastic. I'm jealous of what you get. And I'm like, like <laughs> send some my way. Like, can I come on the show just to promote myself for five minutes? <laughs> like you can um, kill me off. You can have me abducted by aliens, do whatever you need to. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Brown. I have a <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm Chris Brown, not the rapper. I did not beat up Rihanna. It's okay, and then we can go from there. <laughs> yes, I know you said that said, joke probably when I when you heard I who said, was. <laughs> I said, "Do you know how I know that his real name is Chris Brown? Because nobody would stick to that name if it was a fake name." <laughs> I'm sorry. I love your name. Oh, I, I ran for politics once and everyone compared me to that Chris Brown. Oh, do you beat up oh. women? I'm like, oh God. So <laughs> oh, yeah. man. when he first mentioned it, I was like, isn't that the guy that gave Rihanna a black eye or something? And he's like, no, it's not that one. No, no. <laughs> As like, you can okay, tell, I'm white. <laughs> so <laughs> you, yes. uh, you but are I want very drop snow cream color. <laughs> <laughs> I want to like as we were saying, we're talking about those numbers. Are you surprised at how well it's done in a in a age where we are in TikTok world, we are in social media where everything is like two minutes? People are gravitating to those traditional long form storytelling again via audio. Well, uh, well, I think I I think you know everything happens. Like for each generation, you know, there's change. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of revert back. You know, some generations will revert back to another time. Like, you know, well, like vinyl records are making a comeback. You know, you can go to Walmart and buy vinyl records um, as well as record players. And I think that's what's happened here. You know, you <laughs> said, you, you said earlier, I like horror movies. I like older horror movies because the stuff that's coming out to that matter of fact, we just did a show, <laughs> uh, what, about three weeks ago? Probably. It will drive you crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was three weeks ago. Yeah, where um, it was sort of my statement about all of the sequels and the reboots and uh, prequels and all, it's like nobody has a good idea anymore, you know? So, and I think our stuff is original enough, even though it's a throwback mm -hmm. to the uh, radio drama, and even the BBC in London, they, they still do radio drama. Yeah. 
and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, I gave you that one, Unbelievable yeah. Truth. Yeah. Panel shows. And you can listen that. to. I mean, if you're on the go all the time and you're driving or something, you know, you, you're not going to be watching anything anyway. So. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then if you watch the first, like if you watch the first season, there's only a picture, the picture of the door. Yeah. And, and that's it. Yeah. We changed that. And <laughs> she was the one that convinced, maybe we could throw a few pictures in. And yeah. I said, you know, that's well and good. I don't want to put too much information out because you're supposed to use your imagination, which I don't think people do enough of now. But I'm still a visual audio person. Yeah. Like, I want to see and, something sometimes. So now I have to edit twice. Big <laughs> because, smiles. <laughs> <laughs> the first the audio part, and then I do the video part, and I let her watch the video, and she'll make the suggestions. And, and <laughs> can you? Like, I'm like, oh well, yeah, that's easy to do because the program's already there. All I got to do is go in and change it. So it really doesn't take that long to do. So. What's been the biggest surprise that you've both learned about yourself over this last 50 episodes? And for those who are listening to this right now, we're, we're, we are recording this on June 17th. So there are probably a few episodes after after uh, we release this that have been come out. So this is being recorded on episode on um, June 15th, uh, 17th, sorry. So what have you learned about both yourselves? And we'll start with Crimson on this because uh, as an actress who has been done, who's done work through theater, which is very a in person, in uh, in a theater production, doing it to a microphone is such a different, eclectic, uh, unique experience. What have you learned about yourself during this experience with Wins uh, with Swan? That I still use hand gestures and I still make weird weird <laughs> movements while I'm recording because the passion is still inside of you. You're putting it. To the listener's ear but it doesn't make you move any less different um that and this is way easier than theater yeah <laughs> well um, unless i'm killing you and then it's uh, a little difficult well i mean <laughs> okay. i almost drowned the other night i did almost drown but yeah we do it, our own so uh, it, sound effects okay so, i was like in real life like was swan holding you underneath the bathtub just not, to get the proper uh, audio <laughs> You tell what you did. <laughs> no, his hand was not on me, but you know, we have to have this drowning scene, and like in this show, he's pushing my head underwater, and so I dumped my head in this huge bowl of water, and I'm like, <laughs> and then I sucked a shit ton up up my nose, and I was like, hold on a minute, I'm seriously drowning. Hold on. <laughs> it's just it's fun. I, I know that sounds weird saying that after that sentence, but, <laughs> but it's fun. It's just, you get to be creative and no one sees you doing these silly antics and nobody knows what you go through to get these takes. And it's just two best friends having fun. <laughs> so on the flip side there, I'm sorry, I want to, I just want, I need to clarify. I need to ask this follow-up question to what just Crimson just said. So Swan, how have you wanted to kill Crimson lately? Is there anything that's on the future? Like, I think I've just about done it in every way imaginable now. Yes. Um, Has that came out yet? Yeah, every day's oh, okay. already been All right. released. Yeah. yeah, and every day he has to continue to kill me daily. It's you, you have to listen to it. But there was bacon grease, a shotgun, and, um, uh, the dragon, an axe, um, choking, choking, yes, choking. Um, I think that was about it. So the natural yeah. progression question to that after that is to Crimson, how are you still friends with someone who is uh, having fun killing you on a regular basis? You know, I'm, I've been called eccentric before. So I think that's just, I don't know. Oh, I'm a strange one, Mr. Grinch. That's all I can say. <laughs> uh, I mean, we, it, you know, we, we did this for fun. Yeah, absolutely. It, it was basically, that's all it was designed to be, is something fun uh, for us to do. And we've had a great time doing it. Absolutely. And we're going to continue to do it as long as, one, we can come up with the scripts. And he can come up with two, the scripts. Two, we have enough people involved. Because the one thing I did not really want is, uh, like, 
a storytelling kind of time with the same voices. Yeah. You know, every episode. It's, you know, so we <clears throat> kind of changed our voices. Like we have a, a, a sort of a series, a running series throughout the whole thing mm -hmm. called Haunting. It mm -hmm. started with Haunting is Hard and went on to do uh, Haunting Takes a Vacation, yeah. Haunting Takes a Test. Uh, the oh, one tonight was Haunting's Uninvited. <laughs> so it's a continuing series. Well, she plays Dorothy uh, in it. And just by using her voice, I can tell, okay, that's Dorothy. But if you go back to say, The Woods, The Wonderful Woods, that was a much different character. Or the one with the Chevy key. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, uh, a dangerous, dangerous game. game. A dangerous game. Yeah. That was just another uh, two person little yeah. thing. I like the multi character ones, especially. Yeah. Well, the only one I had trouble with was Red Hat Society. Oh my God. Well, how many characters were in that? Like a, a million. <laughs> <laughs> I stupidly write a a, a script that had seven, count them, seven female, female characters, characters, and we only had two, two. female <laughs> actresses. So it's like, hey, we well, met one girl at the, the um, shop down the down the way, yeah. and we got her to do a voice. <laughs> We're wow. just trying to, you know, go fishing for people and say, hey, would you like to do this? Hey. And we're great talkers, so. You the, certainly the, are. The, the response has been fantastic. Fantastic. You know, we love we love all of our actors and actresses. Yes, they're wonderful. Of course, we have our favorites. You know, but I know. Not supposed <laughs> to say that. But everybody has just been great in it. You know, I mean, they they have fun too. We we they have said, you know, we're we're having fun too. Send us more. <laughs> <laughs> so to follow up on the question that I had asked Crimson a while back, but I want to ask Swan this as well. What have you learned about yourself? What have you learned about your writing style, your ability to tell these type of stories, to continue to tell these stories? What have you learned? Oh, man. So when you asked her that, she was easy. I'm a little more difficult with that question because I have had so much happened in my own personal life that I find it, I guess, easy to put a story, like if I think about it and put it on paper, I pretty much, it's like a, a cell form of exorcism. <laughs> because literally, my the very first book I wrote was called The Convincer. And I based it on two actual serial killers, a conglomeration of two serial killers. That was such a naughty book. I know. And no, if you're under 35, you shouldn't. Yeah, stay away from me. But uh, <laughs> it took me about four years, but I had the idea of one scene for years prior to actually sitting down and writing. And I I I've learned that if if I can if I can take control of the story, I can sit down and write it. But there has been times when I'll go for a couple of weeks and not write a word and it's just things it's, things are happening yeah, you know life happens. life happens right and um but if i really put my mind to it i can i just wrote that uh sydney chase episode the other night so you've learned so, about yourself that you are absolutely and, fan fucking tactic <laughs> and are. i've always said i'm not an actress <laughs> No, I was radio, but I'm not an actor. You get up when uh, you're telling stories too, and you make the hand gestures, and you're like, and she said in a dark, deep voice, da, 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 da. you do the same shit I do. <laughs> yes, I, do. I, I will I will agree with Crimson because you both have been using your hands very actively through this entire I told you. interview. <laughs> and, um, and we're not Jewish. <laughs> don't say that. Sorry. <laughs> Are you going off the Mel Brooks film? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was like, you can't say that. That's not right. Oh, but, uh, sometimes, sometimes it's just what we say. Sometimes you say things you regret two minutes later, but that's the way the world is these days. Yeah. Um, I know. I know more than anyone that. <laughs> I, I wanna, that's why she's such a good editor because she keeps up with everything. 
I'll throw something in and she'll say, you, you, you can't, no. No. not with what's happening right now. Yeah. Okay. You gotta change. So. Okay. You, you, you've opened up a Pandora's box and I want to play in that box for a few minutes if you're okay with that. Oh boy. Go <laughs> Let's do it. Um, doing a radio show like this, it can be a touchy subject for some people. Death, issues around uh, certain things. Is there ever a moment when you're about to put out an episode and something has changed in the world that you say, okay, maybe we have to wait for this episode for about eight months, or maybe we don't put out this episode because the, with the gun shooting in Texas right now, there's a lot of uh, gun violence talk. So has there ever been a moment when you've had to sort of hold back what the story is that you're wanting to tell? I would, I would say yes, for one. But my memory is the longest. Which one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you don't need to tell me what it was it about. Yeah. Don't have to tell me that yeah, because yeah. I don't want to put you in an awkward position. But I want to know yeah. uh, on that. Do you ever do you do you have to be careful how you write stories in 2022? Because you, Swan, you and I, we listen to these 1970s CBS shows and we remember them, right? They, like yeah. nothing was off limits. Like everything was everything, right? Like it was a little right. bit more PC, but it was, it was what it was. In 2022, you can offend anyone by saying the wrong one word and it just goes left field. So as a writer, is it hard to write to the, the year that we're in? I would say nine times out of 10, we don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, but there is that one time out of 10 that. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we, we shouldn't really. This. Yeah, we'll rethink uh, uh, the, Some, the, the dynamic. The, the dynamic. dynamic you know. No, and the I, and story I, might be the same, but the approach is different. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. And, and I'm not yet again not trying to blow smoke up at anyone's ass here, but it seems like you actually have fun doing this, and it's so refreshing <laughs> to listen to this these stories and go, "Holy crap, these guys are demented!" Because with some of the stuff they put out there, and then you talk to them like you're doing right now, and you go, "What? Wait, what, this isn't what I heard on YouTube last <laughs> night when I was going to bed. What is this?" So. We're not crazy. We just have overactive imagination yeah. and we use them fervently. So one of my favorite episodes is actually uh, one in, in the second season or third, Rampage. Rampage. Oh, yeah. She did such a fantastic job. And you were talking about being politically correct and all that, especially with what's going on with the gun violence. This is a story about a woman who's killing people with a knife on the street. But after I'd written it, she edited it, we did it, I put it together, and I was listening to it, uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago, just driving home, and I actually started crying at the end because I was feeling empathy for the character that she was playing. She just did it so well. Um, because not to give the ending away if nobody's, if you haven't no, heard it yet. Don't give the ending away, make no. them listen. Yeah. You have to listen to the ending, but it really, even though I wrote it, it her performance is uh, what kind of got me to that level. Uh, and then, of course, it happened to you when you did It Will Drive You Crazy and Dave. Oh, <laughs> yes. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, yes. Right. Well, yes, right. Character, right. His name was Dave, but yes, I love okay. him. He's my friend. <laughs> He's your friend. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna start wrapping up here, and I want to start with this okay. for my listeners. And we have listeners, like I said, from coast to coast to coast, and the UK, down in Australia. 
Um, before I ask you where they can find more information about you and where they can listen, what episode should they start with? What episode would you say is the one that if you're going to, because you, you were like, should we really go back to harvest? Well, I'm always one that always likes to start at number one, but for right. you, what would be the one that you would say, if you really want to see what we're all about, start with this episode. And I want you both to give me an answer on this. They're so different. They're so different. Yeah. I mean, there's like, there's, we love them all. There's, there's like horror in some, and then there's like mystery and thriller and vampires and werewolves. And there's like different pieces and parts and witches and craziness. It, I, I think if you wanted to, I mean, just randomly start one to basically hear a good technical and a good performance it would have to be the woods, woods the, the wonderful woods. woods that's what i was thinking which was uh i think second season yeah i don't know i, I don't remember i don't know the number se- yeah i think it was uh no it wasn't second season, second season yes, episode it was. three yes it was, yeah it was the second season because we did that one to get a little <laughs> to get a little personal we both caught the virus her a little more than me and yeah i was hospitalized she, it was uh, crap man it was yeah it was horrible <clears throat> and she came off that we did the woods the wonderful woods while she was still on the oxygen yeah so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was a rough one but i loved it it was so much fun and i couldn't not like what am i gonna do just lay in bed all day being like oh i'm sick Ooh. no no Gotta get shit done. She's a trooper. She's, She's certain- a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> How could be? I think we would both agree that Wood is the wonderful the woods, woods would be yeah. the one to actually start with. Start with, yeah. Just because to see some twisted stories. And I will say this to anyone who's listening to this right now or watching this: listen to all of them. Honestly, I've been going through them, and they have been fantastic. I know one just released today. Um, and I literally saw it was per, like literally got dropped while we started recording this. So I'm like, I'm missing a new episode already. So I have to, I, I, like, I was like, I, I need, I need to stop the conversation and listen to it. Um, but for, for those who want to listen to it, um, the link, uh, to the, I'm going to say this right doorway to nightmare, uh, YouTube channel will be in the show notes. So if you're listening to this in your car right now, please pull over before you start looking at the show notes, please do not try to do that while you're driving. (laughs) And where else can they find more information about this great, uh, group, the, the, the friendship that is crimson and swan. Um, we are thinking about doing some videos, so maybe some upcoming videos. Yeah, um, and Winslow. this is all her idea too. Okay, uh, completely her idea. Yep. Um, Crimson and Swan. Yeah, Swan uh, and Crimson. Just sort of a kind of a talking about it. You know, we'll put them up. And... Oh, we have to do the chicken wing thing. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, that's what Sydney you'll see Chase. later. Yeah, this is like... <laughs> it's Sydney Chase and Alex, and it's the chicken wing thing. Yeah, and we're also working on working on spinning off the Sydney Chase. We've got yeah. we've got episodes done, we've got the scripts done. It's just a matter of uh, getting a few more episodes in before we actually release them. And uh, so it's we're kind of doing double duty now with both Doorway yeah. and now Sydney Chase. Yeah. Sydney Chase was a character I actually wrote for her. Uh-huh. It's a Sherlock Holmes kind of thing without the deductive reasoning or anything plays a private detective i play her friend the doctor oh, i have deductive reasoning yeah i know you do but, <laughs> uh <laughs> it, it was just it, we just had so much fun doing it yes and, it was it's fantastic yeah. i love the sydney chase ones and the haunting ones because yeah. he plays fred he plays the little ghost that Bless his heart. That's what we say in the South. Bless his heart. Yeah, oh, I'm here. Bless. Get out of here, Fred. <laughs> um, the links to the show, your uh, YouTube channel will be in the show notes. Uh, Winslow has Twitter, which will be linked in the show notes as well. So I highly recommend that you go out and uh, follow him. Um, before I leave, I've got to ask the million dollar question. You've already answered it a little bit, but I want to know more. 
What's next? Yeah, What's know. next on the horizon for the night uh, doorway to nightmare? Is it is it more of the same? Are you going to be more uh, working on Sydney? Are you going to be doing both at the same time? Because you guys are you seem to be putting out a lot of great content so what's next we're going to be doing both at the same time and working on the videos that we've been talking about yeah 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 um it i i told her in the beginning i will i will go as long as everybody remains interested in it if we get the actors that will do it because you know people will do some and then they'll kind of drop away. They have other projects they're doing or whatever, and we have to recast or yeah. something like that. But it's fine with us. Yeah. You know. We can find more people. And yeah, it really comes across. I told everybody, have fun with it. Yes. Mm. We will do it until we're dead. Yeah. Because it's fun <laughs> and we enjoy it. And you guys see, it seems like you enjoy it. And like I said, at first I was like, okay, what have I gotten myself into when I was listening to some of these <laughs> stories? I'm like, this is going to be interesting. This is fun. And then you guys were so bubbly. And I'm like, wait, like two and two does not equal four in this situation. Um, I'm, I, like I said, you have a fan up here in Calgary, Alberta. I'm so looking forward to future episodes of uh, Doorway to Nightmare and Sydney as well. So um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for taking an hour out of your busy night and just sitting down and chatting with me about your show, what the future holds, and how uh, two friends can actually put together something that has made an impact on this world in some sense. So thank you. I really appreciate that. And thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Really, really enjoyed it. When's this going to air? <laughs> uh that will be airing this will be airing on the 28th of june on um, where youtube all spot so it will be on spotify podcast apple podcast uh uh stitcher youtube uh, oh my god where's the other one where's the other one where's the other one where's the other one <laughs> other platforms where you can get your radio shows that i can't remember right oh, now because i just yeah, had chemo yeah, treatments okay. today <laughs> You, so, you, you are like tech savvy yeah like, he does all the tech i just i just do whatever i do youtube done. stitcher that, spotify Apple it. Podcast. I, I, I can't fathom the rest google of play i can't believe i forgot google play how did i forget google play amazon <laughs> podcast you can get it on there as well with our you can get his books on amazon as well there yeah. you go, which we will be having Swan on again to talk about his books, but I oh, wanted to sweet. talk about these as well. So with that, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to another great episode Absolutely. of the Cross Border Interviews thank with Chris you. Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, get out from behind the social media for about 10 minutes each day and go have a conversation with somebody. It does make the world better. It does help our society and it helps us grow as a human race. So with that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone. Keep talking. Awesome. Uh